Hey, what is up guys? How are we doing? And welcome back to part two of the Mr. Who's the Boss build project. And if you haven't seen part one, then it's over there. But essentially it was a Ryzen editing PC for Aaron, Maney, Marnie, Mr. Who's the Boss himself. And essentially it was all about a blue and white themed build that sort of matches with his channel. And it turned out really well and I'm really happy with pretty much all aspects with it, bar a few, but again, you can find all the information in the previous video. This video though, is all about performance and how this PC actually performs. So if you wanna go for something similar yourself, you can sort of be in the know and see exactly how this is going to perform. Before we get there though, I have actually managed to pair this up with some Corsair peripherals that Corsair very helpfully provided that sort of do mix in with the blue and white theme even more. And say what you will about RGB mouse mats, the whole setup really does work, other than maybe the ViewSonic monitor that has a uh, sort of FreeSync red uh, stripe going down the bottom of it. But if you ignore that, then it's a really nice, clean looking setup that really does match the theme. But back to performance, and this system has a GTX 1070 paired with a Ryzen 1800X. And while some people will say that's not the absolute best thing you can get, for what we were trying to achieve, I think it's pretty much ideal. And moving to some of the benchmarks pretty much reinforces this. And it's worth saying that I did have to do a BIOS update on this motherboard before I could actually get the RAM to overclock to a decent speed. In the end, it still couldn't quite get to the 3000 megahertz that it is rated for, but we got close with 2800 which I would be interested to see if it does make a difference, if we could clock it higher, but I suspect that this is pretty much the sort of sweet spot anyway for RAM speeds. But regardless, in our 4K render test where we used DaVinci Resolve and we actually output a 4K file, it did this in just over 30 seconds, 36 seconds to be exact. And that may not mean that much to you, but genuinely, if you want to do some proper editing, this is a great PC. Scrubbing the timeline was nice and clean. And when you're outputting in around about sort of two times real time, at least with my 4K uh, ProRes file that was down, down sampled a little bit, uh, you know you're pretty much on to a winner. As far as Cinebench is concerned, we got just under 1600. And while this doesn't quite match what I've been able to get out of the 6900K, it is significantly cheaper, although of course that CPU has since been replaced, but it's still cheaper than the 7820K that should offer you sort of fairly similar performance, albeit with quad channel memory. As far as gaming is concerned, you'll start to see the benchmarks appear on your screen now, but in both synthetic, in both synthetic and real world, uh, this was pretty much everything I would expect from a GTX 1070, and we weren't really seeing any form of bottlenecking. So I think that if you are in the market for a CPU to pair with a GTX 1070, then the 1800X is actually a very good shout. If you do want to play games at 4K, then maybe, well I say maybe, then this isn't the absolute best card you can get and you will need to lower some settings. But in every test that we've done here, it's all at ultra settings and it's pretty much respectable frame rates in all. Moving on to the overclocking, and this was probably the thing I was most disappointed in with this system, and you just can't really get that much more out of Ryzen. And other people have reported success with anywhere between 3.9 and 4.1 gigahertz, so I sort of wanted to aim for a target of four, and realistically, every time I tried to boot up, I was just black screening as soon as I actually put any pressure on the CPU, even cranking up the V-Core to 1.375, which, I'm sure we could go higher, but it would defeat the longevity of the chip and it would output a little, little bit too much heat for my liking as even with a V-Core of 1.375, we're still hitting not 90 degrees, but we are getting very, very close to it. So around about 15, 20 degrees more than we would at stock. So I did have to crank it down to 3.95 gigahertz to get this stable, again at that V-Core of 1.375. How did this all translate into performance? Well, Cinebench, as we would expect, we did increase that score and got nearer the 1700 mark. And this isn't really actually gonna translate that much 
into more performance in real world applications though and while it might help a little bit with scrubbing if you are looking to sort of work with 4k or above files we only got one extra second off that render time after being overclocked and this isn't really something i would be willing to sort of trade longevity system noise and those temperatures for so realistically i'd sort of advise aaron keeps this at stock gaming performance as well well again we got pretty much no extra performance out of this chip, which is almost a good thing. It shows that the U1070 isn't really being bottlenecked. Most tests we saw an increase of one frames a second. Some of them we saw a decrease in one frames a second and some of them were the same. I translate this to mean that pretty much there is no performance gain here by overclocking the CPU. It doesn't matter what resolution, resol resolution? doesn't matter what resolution it was either. Pretty much all the results are the same. So if you're someone that doesn't want to overclock your system, then rejoice. You don't need to worry about missing out on performance. But if you are someone that really doesn't want to get the extra, then maybe it's just this sample of this particular chip, but there wasn't really that much more to gain here. And so with that, it's pretty much everything you need to know about the performance of the system. At the time of filming, I haven't yet delivered it to Aaron himself. I'll leave all the content we make down in the description below or in the card or somewhere. Hopefully you won't be able to miss it. Don't forget to check out part one if you haven't already. Like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't. A massive thank you to everyone for checking out this video and I'll see you in the next one. And welcome back to part two of the Mr. B Mr. Who's the Boss. Mr. Blair. Crap name.